Hi, it's Robin. Today we're going to look at an interesting bug, or actually a couple related bugs, in the val function in Commodore 64 and VIC-20 BASIC. It seems to be in other Microsoft-derived BASIC implementations as well, but we'll stick to the VIC in 64 today. So what does the val function do? Well, it converts a string into a numeric value. So if we just print something like print val, if we put something like hi inside, it just returns zero, no numbers detected, and so the numeric value of hi is just considered zero. If we do something like a val of 100, but put it in quotes so it's a string, you see it rightly converts it to a numeric value 100. It's fairly forgiving if you pass it something like val of 100 dogs. It doesn't give an error, it just returns 100. As soon as the evaluator encounters a character that can't be part of a number, it just stops evaluating and returns the numeric value of what it's found so far. So if we swap there around and go dogs 100, as soon as it finds the character D, it just stops and returns 0. It almost seems too forgiving in some cases if we do something like this with spaces in between. It just ignores all the spaces and treats it as if it is the number 11,111. I mean, you might consider that good. I don't know. And this value or evaluate function, it's actually using the same routine that the basic parser uses. You could do really weird stuff with it. So we'll just type this directly into the parser. So you can print something like one, 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 plus two, two, two. And what do you get? 333. It's just parsing this as 111. And then there's the addition. And this 22 and 2 are combined to 222. So it's just 111 plus 222 is 333. And we can use the val function to illustrate the different ways the plus operator behaves on string values and numeric values with a little program like this. If we just define a string as the string 100, looks like the number 100, but the computer doesn't understand it as a number. It's just a series of characters. And then line 20, we can print out a string plus a string. And line 30, we can print out the value of a string plus the value of a string. Okay, so let's run that. And we get 100100 and 200. That's because line 20, when you add two strings with that plus operator, BASIC actually interprets it as an append. So those two strings are just appended together and form a new string. Again, because 100 isn't a number, it's just the characters, 100. Zero, zero. While when we take the value of a string, it becomes a numeric 100 and another numeric 100. And then in that context, instead of this being appending or actually concatenation, it's probably a better word for it, up here, this is a string concatenation. In the case of this, it's two numeric values. So BASIC knows that this is numeric addition, thus giving you 200. And just to clarify, the val function itself does not print anything on the screen. It just converts whatever's inside the brackets and like all functions, returns a value to whatever called it. In this case, a print command wants to print the value so that it is printed to the screen. But you could just as easily assign this to a variable B and run that. And now 200 isn't printed out, but it is stored in the variable B. 200, there we go. Okay, but there's a pretty strange bug in the val function. Here's a short program that demonstrates it. If we just go line 10, a equals val, just like before. And inside the quotes, we're going to put 1e39, 
and a close quote. And then we'll just put a remark here, like rem show bug and 20, whatever. Rem, this is line 20. Okay, so now we can list our program. You can confirm that it is here. Really, the only code is this first section. All the rest is just comments, these remarks. Now we'll run the program and we get an overflow error in 10. That's not really the bug, but we'll see evidence of the bug now if we list the program again. See what's happened? The closing quotation mark and closing bracket and the comment on line 10, they're gone. They have disappeared. The program has gotten corrupted by trying to execute this line. So I shared this bug on X Twitter a few months ago before I decided to make a video about it. And several people tried it on various computers or emulators that they had access to. Alan Huffman reported that the TRS-80 color computers also have the same bug, even though they have a 6809 processor, not even part of the 6502 family like the Commodore machines. Alan wrote about it on his blog here. Michael Dornboss tried it on his Kim 1, and even that 1977 version of Microsoft Basic has this bug. It's a really old bug. Zot confirmed that AppleSoft Basic has the bug. And then Anders Carlson went through many different machines and found that almost all that are running earlier versions of Microsoft Basic have this same problem. Clearly not just the 6502 based machines, but also Z80 computers such as the Color Genie, Mattel Aquarius, and the VTech Laser VZ200. And then Tim Linder showed it was fixed on his IBM PC 5155. So Anders Carlson suggested the bug was fixed with Microsoft Extended Basic around 1981, but many manufacturers kept using older versions of Basic for the next few years. It appears to be fixed on the Commodore Plus 4, C16, and C128, which were released in 1984 and 1985. So huge thanks to everybody for all that information. Sorry if I missed anyone. So the important takeaway is that this bug was in just about every early version of Microsoft Basic, not just Commodore, not even just the 6502 versions, but even the 8080, the Z80, and 6809 versions. So the VIC-20 does have the same bug, but it can manifest a little differently because of the differences with memory layout in the VIC-20 compared to the C64. So huge thanks to Alexi Eben for pointing this bug out to me. Okay, so again, just we write a short program. We're just going to set TI string, that's the internal system clock, to zero or, well, midnight really. Then line 20, if the value of ti string, and yes, you can take the value of it, is less than 15, go to 20. Okay, we'll just list that to confirm it's okay. Clear the screen and run the program. Now look up in that top left corner. Do you see a strangely, I don't know, flickering is quite the right word. Might depend on the video capture exactly how it comes through, but I can see an at symbol. Okay, and that appeared there for about 15 seconds. Just list that program again. After line 10 sets the clock to midnight, then line 20 just loops, evaluating the TI string. And as the seconds tick up on it, this will continue to be true. TI stream will be less than 15 for about 15 seconds. It will just continue to loop and then the program will end. So for that whole time, that at symbol is sitting up in the corner, but you see line 20 or nowhere in this program is anything printed or poked to the screen. And yet, there's that symbol. And it disappears when we stop. You might notice that I pressed a space before I typed run here. I'll do it again. It's just a little harder to see, but you might see that the R is kind of getting corrupted there or glitching out. And that's an at symbol briefly replacing that R.
So maybe rather than a bug, this should be considered more of a glitch, as it doesn't seem to cause any problems beyond the visual artifact. When the program is done running, you can see that the R or the blank is restored. The at symbol isn't stuck there. And our program doesn't appear to be corrupted in any way. Okay, so we'll clear that program. Now, here's a shorter example that's more similar to the bug we saw in the C64. We will print the value of 1E39. Okay, we get an overflow error. Now, it doesn't seem anything's happened. I'm just going to move the cursor up to the top left corner. And what do you see there? Normally, the cursor blinks just a solid square. In that top left corner now, it's blinking an at symbol. Actually, if I hit a space there, you see it's gone. If I go down here again and print val 1E39 again, now you see the at symbol actually appears there. The reason it was only blinking before is because the color in that square was set to white. So when that at symbol appeared, it was there but it was also displaying in white, the same as the background. So it was invisible until we moved the cursor over it. Then when I hit space there, it actually made a blue space, which was still invisible, but now the foreground color was blue. And then when we did the at val again, then it was visible. <laughs> That's kind of confusing. Okay, so what's going on? Let's go back to the C64 and I'll try and explain this. Okay, I've got my Kung Fu Flash in here using Adrian Gonzalez's latest Super Snappy ROM. And we'll use that in a bit. Okay, so why does this happen? Let's examine how the Val function works. I think this would be really long-winded to try and walk through all the disassembly of it. So today instead we'll use Dan Hebe's excellent book called Toolkit Basic on pages 269 to 270. So this whole book is an explanation of how C64 and VIC-20 BASIC work, almost like a disassembly, except that it doesn't actually show the disassembled code. It just explains it in plain English. I think it's an excellent book. It is available on archive.org. I've actually done a, a book club on it before. Okay, so on page 269 to 270, it shows all the steps that Val goes through. And you can pause and read it all for yourself if you'd like, but I'll give you the short version. Basically, in steps one through five, the string that's going to be evaluated is isolated. And some pointers are set to the beginning and the end of the string. So step six and seven are the critical point. The byte one location past the end of the string is retrieved and pushed onto the stack for later. Step seven then puts a zero in that spot immediately after the string. So now the string to be evaluated is zero or null terminated. Then steps eight and nine convert the ASCII string to a floating point number. And step 10, the save byte is pulled back from the stack and put where the null terminator was, restoring everything back to how it was hopefully. So in case you thought it was just a problem with this scientific notation, that's not the problem here. So if I change line 10 here to have 38 nines in it, rem show bug. Sorry, I didn't explain this yet. Scientific notation, the E means 10 to the power of whatever is following it. So this is 10 to the power of 39 a very big number, which causes that overflow error. 10 to the 39 is bigger than what BASIC can handle. So I've deliberately put a number of 38 digits. You can see that there. I'll run it. The program ran. And if we list it, we see the program did not become corrupted. Rem show bug. It's still there. So if I just list that again, I'm just going to add one more nine, pushing it from 38 digits up to 39 digits. I'm going to run the program. And now we get that overflow error in line 10 and we list it. And you see the program's become corrupted. 
the closing quote bracket and the rem show bug are gone okay so there's sort of two things going on here one is kind of just like a hacker glitch and that has to do with this idea of putting this zero into the string temporarily so the first problem is whenever val wants to evaluate something the routine that it uses expects a null terminated, a zero terminated string. Here in memory, this is not a null terminated string. This is a, what we call a quotation mark terminated string. It's the string has quotes around it. It doesn't have a zero embedded either visibly or invisibly. So what basic does is it finds the end of the string and substitutes a zero character. Now, it, that's not like a zero like that. It's actually the at symbol in screen memory. So essentially it puts a zero here, but it's okay because does its little magic uh, conversion, then pulls the quote back and puts it back there, right? Okay, well, you saw that weird flashing at symbol in the VIC-20. Each time TI stream was being evaluated, the TI string was being put up into string heap memory. I'm just going to clear the screen. On an unexpanded VIC-20, screen memory is actually at the end of RAM, and basic memory is just below it, and strings are just, like where I've got this flashing cursor, pretend this is an unexpanded VIC-20. One character to the left, if I could, I can't move further left, but if I could, that would be the very top of string memory. So that TI string is copied up there into memory. Then a zero is put right after it. Well, that's this location, the top left screen. So that's why that at symbol was blinking away there while TI string was being evaluated. Again, that didn't corrupt anything. It's just a temporary, it's like a graphic glitch. Combine that kind of problem or hack with another problem. Now that we've shown that the corruption happens with any overflow, we'll go back to our normal one. A equals val 1e39 rem show bug. Okay, so this is where the bug happens. In this case, the string to be evaluated is 1e39. So basic sees that quote, puts it on the stack, puts a zero byte there instead, which looks like an at symbol goes off and evaluates it, but <laughs> it hits this 1E39, which causes an overflow error. Basic bails out, we'll run it. And what happens, that at symbol never gets corrected. When this overflow error happens, basic drops out with an error and it never does put the quotation mark back. It leaves a zero in memory, and that zero is in turn interpreted by the basic interpreter as the end of a line. So line 10 has been truncated prematurely by this zero byte that the value routine put in memory. Oh, I hope I'm making sense. Okay, so if we freeze and go into the super snapshot monitor, we can look at our basic program here. And as we've discussed, basic memory normally starts at 0801. And here's our program. These first two bytes are a pointer to the next line of basic. And here's line number 10 in hex 000A. That's in low byte, high byte format, as the 6502 does. I'll switch to lowercase mode here. Okay, this is the variable A equals, and C5 is the token for the val function. And then next is the opening bracket. Right here, you can see eight hex bytes here are mirrored in Petsky form to the right. So you can see that this last two eight hex is that opening parenthesis. And then two two hex is the quotation mark. And then one E three nine is the value that we're going to evaluate. And here we go, there's the zero. That should be a 2-2 two, two hex, but the val routine temporarily put a zero byte there and never cleaned up after itself because of the overflow error. These remaining bytes here, there's the closing bracket, 
there's a colon. Here's the token for rem. And here is our text show bug still exists, but it's being stranded. B U G. And there is our actual zero byte that should be there. Most of our basic is here. It, it doesn't show up in list because the list routine just obeys this zero byte that has prematurely truncated our line. But the rest of our basic code is here. And actually we can restore it just by doing, by putting that quotation mark back in. If we look at it, we see now there's the closing quote. So if we exit, ooh, in lowercase, resume. Now if we list the program again, there, it's back. We fixed it. Now we can run it again, cause the bug again. Once again, go into the monitor. And the reason list still works to line 20, here's the uh, premature line termination again, is because this pointer is the hex address of the next line of code. It's at 081C. Now if we go down here, 19, 1A, 1B, 1C, there's the actual zero byte termination. And there is the start of line two. So that's why list still works properly, at least in this case. There might be some situation where the program actually gets corrupted badly enough. If you can list, that's fine. But maybe if you tried to insert new code, it would break or something like that. I, I haven't investigated that. Okay, so this was fixed in later versions of BASIC. I believe it was fixed instead of this kind of hack of just briefly inserting the zero, they properly copied the string every time into the heap and left actual room along with an extra byte for that null termination. <laughs> At least that, that's what I think, or that's how I would solve it. Uh, but I guess it just seemed like a waste of memory or waste of CPU time. Uh, what could go wrong, right? Okay, so thanks again to everybody who I don't know if they knew they were helping me out on X Twitter there. I'll put links in the video description to those various tweets and blog posts and so on. So you can read that. Thanks to all those people. Thanks very much to my patrons for their support. Thank you for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Scary.